Blockchain technology holds the potential to revolutionize how we use the internet. And many people lose sight of this among the noise of the crypto markets. Whenever the price goes up, you know, it's the future. And whenever the price goes down, it's over like nobody's going to use this. Well, I'm here to tell you that even in times like these when the market is down, silently behind the scenes, there's one massive blockchain trend that's steadily growing and has been for years, and it's forever changing the world as we know it. And nobody's really talking about this. But today, I'm going to because the numbers don't lie, the data is there to support it, and you have to pay attention to this if you're trying to navigate this space. I'm going to explain everything you need to know in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis, you know, what this is, why you should watch it, and how you can capitalize off of it. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And like I always say in these videos, the absolute best way to make it in this space is to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer. And I can show you how to do that step by step from start to finish over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about the fastest growing crypto trend right now that nobody's really talking about. So a report was just published by Chow Wang over on Twitter about the crypto industry and the trends for the first half of 2024. And in this report, it tracks lots of different aspects of the space like chain usage, product usage, demographics. But inside this report, they also track the different sectors in the crypto space uh, and their market share over time. And when you look at this graph, you'll see there's three different related crypto sectors that are experiencing some of the fastest growth, okay? Those are DeFi, payments, and real-world assets. And it's these three subtrends that I'm going to lump together into a mega trend that I call digital finance. And this digital finance trend is the fastest growing trend in crypto right now, and the data shows it. And nobody's really talking about this. And it's not really new. It's kind of old news and, you know, dare I say, boring. Because people in crypto have such shiny object syndrome that they're always looking for the next hot thing. But they don't realize that the most important thing is right under their noses. So let me tell you why this is the case, why it's such a big deal, why you need to pay attention for this for the future, and how to capitalize off this. So first, let's talk about why. Why is this digital finance mega trend the fastest growing and nobody's talking about it? So why does it even work in the first place? Well, first, you have to understand what is blockchain even used for? Well, it's a public ledger that secures and tracks the movement of value, okay? Now, that value can be just about anything, but the most obvious use case is money, you know, duh. And cryptocurrencies, you know, were the first application of this, you know, with Bitcoin. But then along came smart contract chains like Ethereum, where you could actually write programs with the money on the blockchain itself. And there were very obvious programs initially, like DeFi apps, where you could basically take existing financial products and moving them onto the blockchain, things like savings, lending, and trading. But they're also really boring things, just like payments with stable coins, okay? People take for granted all the time that they can just pay for things digitally, but there's new ways to do this with things like stable coins. Now, you have to ask yourself, why would you use blockchain to do this thing and not just the way that we have now? What's the actual value that the blockchain is providing? Why would we use this as the future? Well, there's lots of reasons. You know, the earliest adopted ones really come down to the exciting stuff, which is, you know, financial speculation. This is what typically attracts the early adopters. Basically, you can create assets like cryptocurrencies that rise in value and make you money. Now, this obviously has trade-offs because you can lose money and what ca causes a lot of people to become disillusioned with the crypto space. Like I said before, it's the future when the price goes up and you know it's over and nobody's going to use this when the price goes down. That's got the downside risk. But even the boring use cases like stable coins have massive advantages. So you can send stable m value money to anybody in the world and have it settled in seconds. And you really can't do this any other way with the finality of settlement and the transparency that you have with blockchain, especially if you're talking about larger sums of money. Like you're not just gonna Venmo somebody like $5,000. And sure, you could say, I could just do a wire transfer, but I don't know if you've ever done a wire transfer and had to wait for that thing to settle sometimes half a day, maybe even longer. You gotta go to a bank to do it. Here, you can just do it with a few clicks of a button straight from your laptop. And it's these types of boring use cases that are actually sticking in what's being adopted despite the crypto market's volatility and all the noise. So why is this such a big deal? Well, basically, crypto has found product market fit inside this mega trend of digital finance like I was talking about. 
and I expect it to continue to grow in this area. And it has the best chance out of everything for mainstream adoption. You know, because crypto has a reputation for being a solution in search of a problem. But when you look at data like this and you see clear product market fit with continued year, year, year over year growth, even in a bear market, you can easily debunk that claim. Okay. And for all the naysayers who come out in times like this, when things are bearish, this is pretty good proof that the technology is actually providing value and is growing. And finally, this means a clear bet for the future. Okay. So when I got into this industry, uh, you know, I knew that this was huge. Okay. I've been here since 2017, back when the space was really early. And my basic thesis was, I know this technology has massive potential. Uh, but who knows what the exact timeline is going to be for adoption, okay? And I said to myself, like, think 50 years down the road. Do you really think in 50 years that we're just going to have the same financial monetary system with the antiquated technology that we have right now? I don't think so. And that blockchain's got the best shot at being the replacement for that system, okay? And that thesis still holds true for me now even with the noise of the crypto markets. Now, I don't really think it's going to take 50 years to do that. I think it's going to happen a lot sooner. And this space tends to experience hockey stick-like growth where things go kind of slowly for a little while, maybe some steady growth. And then boom, you have a massive inflection point where the space leaps decades in a very short period of time. And I believe that that inflection point could happen relatively soon in the grand scheme of things. Now, what does this mean for the future and what should you pay attention to as this trend continues to grow? Well, obviously, you know, the boring use cases, I think, are going to continue to increase, like things like stable coins, payments, et cetera, et cetera, the DeFi that we have now. But I do think there's a next wave of DeFi that can emerge that is going to be huge. Things like real world assets. Uh, bringing things like stocks, real estate, bonds on chain into you can that you can trade in a permissionless way. You know we have the technology for this right now. Okay, you, you you could you could do all this stuff now, but really it's regulations that are holding a lot of this back. Okay, and so we'll have to see what the outcome of the 2024 election is inside the United States to see if that changes anything. Um, I'm not trying to be political in this video. Uh, we have seen a little bit of shift in tide with you know Trump coming onto the scene saying that he's building a crypto army, that he wants to lighten regulations for crypto inside the United States. And regardless of whether he gets elected or not, he was the first mover in this and putting political pressure. Uh, the Democrats have also sort of lightened their stance on crypto in some ways. And the whole point is it, it showed both sides that being anti-crypto is a losing strategy. And hopefully we can move in the direction to be much more accommodative of crypto, uh, particularly in the United States. And so some of those regulations lighten and we see things like real world assets really start to blossom. That's the next wave of this evolution and this mega trend, in my opinion. So what does this mean for other sectors? OK, because there's lots of other sectors in crypto, like you can see right here with various degrees of market share. Well, I still think that a lot of these sectors have massive potential, OK, but they're still early in their life cycle. And when something's that early in its life cycle, there's just more risk, okay? You don't know what the long-term lifespan of that's going to be. You know, I'm not downplaying any of these other types of trends. You know, I just tend to follow mainly what is obvious and has traction. And for me, that's digital finance with, you know, DeFi payments and real-world assets. Now, let's talk about how to capitalize off all this, okay? Because, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know truthfully which coin is going to benefit the most from this type of thing over the long term, okay? I don't really give financial advice on my channel. I, of course, have my own bets. You can probably guess what some of those are from watching my videos. Again, not financial advice, but the absolute best bet is to get inside this industry and worth the technology as it grows to this level, okay? And that's exactly why I teach you to become a blockchain developer on this channel so that you can invest in yourself as your best bet because you can always adapt your skills uh, to grow with the evolution of this space. Sure, betting on crypto could be a w good way to do it. You know, I do it myself, but the biggest bet that I've made is on myself and all of you all watching these videos to help you create this value of this technology for the future. And so if that sounds good to you, then of course, make sure you smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get started becoming a blockchain developer today so you can capitalize off this opportunity, I have plenty of you know videos that show you how to code you know for finance on my YouTube homepage. You can go to my YouTube homepage, you can see any of those free tutorials. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step or hey, 
maybe you'll take a massive shortcut entirely. I can show you how to be, increase your income and become a blockchain developer step-by-step start to finish over at adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.